So when you bring a custom beef in, it can seem overwhelming and confusing. We're trying to make things as simple as we can. And so what I'm gonna do is just show you what I would consider a standard cut. And if I was gonna take a beef home, how I would have it done. I use this simple cutting instruction sheet right here. You're gonna notice that we've got T-bones to start with. I'm gonna always recommend that you take the T-bones. I'm not a huge fan of strips and fillets because it changes the entire structure of that custom beef. Then we're gonna get into the top sirloins. I love those cut, especially at about a three quarters inch. Then the sirloin tip steaks, they're part of the round, and so I would always suggest that you tenderize those. And then you're gonna get the option for a rump roast, some round steaks, and a Pike's Peak roast. I would keep the rump, take those round steaks, tenderize them, and also keep that Pike's Peak roast. You're gonna get one of those for each side. Then you're gonna see the chuck roast, and then again, my personal favorite, the chuck steaks. The first four inches of that chuck, absolutely amazing, and you're gonna see this in the video. They tie really close to the ribeye, they make great grilling steaks, so I would suggest to take the first four chuck steaks. And then the arm roast, it's got that good circle bone with some marrow in it. Always would recommend that you take those arm roast. And then you're gonna notice the short ribs, and I would tell you this, is that I would keep the short ribs. If you have those boned out, it could tend to make your hamburger just a little bit fatty. So I would suggest keeping those and putting them on the grill and they're an amazing, amazing cut of meat. Then you come into the ribeyes and I would suggest leaving those bone in. Bone and ribeyes, absolutely fantastic. And then the brisket, come on now. If you're gonna cook a brisket, leave it whole, but we'll cut it in half for you. But I'd again suggest that you leave that whole. Anyway, I hope this video explains a little bit and helps you through the process. So we've got the short loin right here. Here, this is the actual loin. So you're gonna see in a standard cut, I like to cut the sirloins from the front, bone in. It's gonna come back and then he's gonna cut the T-bones this direction. Now, if we bone this out for strips and fillets, you're gonna lose a lot of your weight with the bone and just the structure of this. So again, yep. wanna do the top sirloins, cut bone in, and then T-bones as far as we come back. So when we cut the loin, your other option, this is the standard T-bones and sirloins, the other option would be to do strips and fillets. The problem with that is it's gonna pull that fillet off of this sirloin, and it's also gonna change the structure of these T-bones. So you're obviously gonna come in here and have a strip, you're gonna have a fillet, the fillet's gonna be off of the sirloin. So what we recommend is that you just do a bone-in T-bone, and you do a bone-in sirloin. So this is the sirloin tip. We cut these from the peeled knuckle. Again, our standard cut option would be sirloin tip steaks and tenderized. So your options would be tenderized or not tenderized. I would recommend that you tenderize these because they come from the round. I think they just seem a little bit better. So these are sirloin tip steaks tenderized. Top round, this would be round steaks tenderized. These are your top rounds tenderized. So we just cut the top round and now I'm gonna cut the bottom round. You're gonna see here that I'm pulling the rump roast off of it. And I'm gonna cut bottom round steaks and I would suggest tenderizing those as well. Off the back side of that bottom round, I've got the Pike's Peak Roast. You're gonna see here that it's got the heel of round, the eye of round, and the bottom round. That's gonna make up the Pike's Peak. Just square it up. And we like to net those because that's three different muscles that make up that roast. And that's the Pike's Peak Roast. I definitely suggest getting the rump and the Pike's Peak. So it's gonna be the round steak tenderized. We made the top round, tenderized it, the bottom round, tenderized it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top, pair it with the bottom, and that will be one package. And that makes up a tenderized round steak. So on the chuck, you've got an option to get chuck steaks, chuck roast. I'm always a big fan of the first four being chuck steaks, and I'll show you why. So you're gonna see the first four inches of that chuck make really good chuck steaks. It's really close to the ribeye, so you're gonna see that almost looks like a ribeye. It makes a really good charcoal steak. It's nice and it's big as well, so I would always recommend the first four inches to be cut into chuck steaks. Now we're gonna cut the rest of this chuck into chuck roast. 
Another option that you have is to cut these chuck roasts in half or crock pot style. This, if you wanted to leave them holes about how big they would be, this is on a really big beef. So if it's this size, I'd recommend that you cut it in half or crock pot style. If it's a decent sized beef, I'd leave it alone, leave it whole. But there's your chuck roast. So here's your arm roast. I'm gonna suggest that you get these. Okay, so there's your arm roast. And one of the options that you have is to cut those in half or to leave them whole. I'd recommend leaving them whole, but I like to cook a big roast. If you want them smaller for a crock pot size, we can just cut it in half for you. So this right here is the short rib. One of the reasons that I like to keep these is you can see how much fat's on these. If you bone these out, you move them to your hamburger, it's gonna cause your burger to be real fatty. So I like to go ahead and cut short ribs. So these are the short ribs. And again, I'd recommend that you get them, especially on fatty beef, because you're gonna see if I was to bone that out for burger, it's gonna add a lot of fat to your burger. So I can either throw it away or you can cook it. I'd recommend that you get your short ribs, especially if you like leaner hamburgers. Burger. We've got the ribeye. Your options would be boneless or bone-in. We recommend that you do a bone-in ribeye. These are the bone-in ribeyes off of that ribeye loin. So on the brisket, you've got an option to leave it whole or cut it in half. I personally would leave it whole because I love to cook a whole brisket. But if you cut it in half, just make the cut and obviously you get two pieces.